I'm Kevin Elizabeth, a wedding photographer based in San Diego, and today I'm going to be talking all about budget allocation for your wedding. Wedding budgets can be a really confusing thing. A lot of people don't even know where to start, and I always recommend the place to start is setting your overall wedding budget, whether that's $10,000, $20,000, $50,000, $100,000, or a million dollars if you are a Jonas brother. So set your overall wedding budget and stick to it. Maybe you're a little bit flexible, maybe you go under, maybe you go over. Whatever it is, just set your overall wedding budget first and try to stick to that as much as possible. The next thing you need to do is to evaluate your values and your priorities. So start booking your top priority wedding vendors first, but you need to kind of evaluate your priorities so that you know based on the standard percentages, which I'll show you guys in just a bit um, that I've kind of put together with my research, you need to prioritize your vendors. So you need to think about is photography a top priority? Maybe you need to book them first so that maybe if your top priority vendors are a little bit over your budget, you can pull from some of your priorities that are a little bit lower on your list. So for example, maybe you initially budgeted $3,500 or $5,000 for photography, but your photographer that you want is a couple hundred dollars over that budget. So maybe you splurge for them and then you take away a couple hundred dollars from other categories on your budget. So your budget can be flexible. It is a living and breathing document that can be flexible here and there. So you can pull from other categories to put more in categories that maybe go over from your top priorities. On the flip side, maybe you decide that because those vendors that you were wanting were over budget, maybe you decide that you actually don't wanna go over for them and you want to stick to your initial budget and keep it more set in stone. That's okay too. You don't have to be flexing around your budget. You can keep it set in stone if you want to and not pull from other categories. You can keep it for your original budget if you don't want to move things around. So now what I'm going to show you guys is a little bit of an Excel demo that I've put together and I'm going to show you guys how I would prioritize my own wedding with an example budget and then shift things around based on different priorities that might come up and then I'm going to show you guys different budgets, how this is going to work based on different numbers that you can plug in for your wedding budget, how you can change things around in this spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and jump right into my example. Okay, so this is a template that I found initially on a site called weddingforward.com and then I made a lot of changes to it. I did a lot of revamping and changed a lot of the categories and some of the formatting and added a notes section and a lot of other things to it. Um, just to personalize it to how I felt like it needed to be based on my experience as a bride as well as a vendor. So you can see over in column A, we've got some categories for different types of wedding vendors. And then in column um, B, we've got this column that is estimated percent of budget. So we've got different percentages assigned to different um, vendors over here. And these all add up to 100%. So they should all be making up 100% unless you start um, getting crazy with your percentages. And then column C is estimated budget. So this is just the dollar amount um, tied to the percentages. So if you set your budget at $35,000, which is where we're starting off this example, then that's going to be tied to your percentages and it is going to come out to be a monetary amount. So 2% of $35,000 is $700. So then this next um, column, column D, is where you are going to input once you actually get uh, your quote from your vendor and decide to hire them. That's where you are going to type in what it actually costs. And then column E is going to tell you how much over or under budget you were. So if it's in the negative, then that means you are under budget. If it is positive, that means you are over budget. And then down here, we are currently $35,000 under budget because we haven't spent a penny yet. So um, that's kind of going to give you an example of what to go on. And then if this says at the end of the wedding, if we are um, positive $5,000, that means we are $5,000 over our wedding budget. That means that we spent $5,000 too much. So that's kind of what that means. And then I've got column F, which is a note section, which kind of talks about what all of these different categories might include. So things that you might forget about or not realize uh, what these different vendor categories include. So for example, the rentals, that's going to, depending on what your venue comes with, include tabletop, so like forks, knives, cups, plates, that kind of thing. 
tables, chairs, maybe a lounge if you want to rent a lounge, linens and napkins, dance floor maybe, heaters if you need to rent heaters if it's gonna be cold, little things like that you might not be thinking of. You'll notice that at the top, um, there is a little cell here, this is overall budget, and then a cell here. So when you input a number here, if you watch um, the column estimated budget, the C column, when I change this to 50,000, those numbers all wildly change. So if I change this to 10,000, those numbers are gonna go down quite a lot. So let's put this back at about 35,000. So that's where we're gonna start at. So um, I want to show you guys, you can customize this because I'm gonna provide this to you guys. There's gonna be a link down below if you wanna use this for yourself. When I talk about prioritizing, your um, different categories. So I've set the photo and video a little bit higher than some places recommend. I see a lot of 10s and a lot of 12 percentages, but I personally am really biased. So I feel like set your photo and video a little higher, especially if that's a huge priority for you, especially if you're sharing this budget between photo and video, because it's going to be a little bit more challenging to find a really strong uh, photo and video team if you are having this set at say 10% and you're looking for both photo and video. So if you're wanting to have both strong photo and video, you might want to set it up a little bit higher or maybe you set it a little bit lower like 12% and you really want a strong photography team, but maybe your videography team doesn't have to be as strong. So I've just set this a little bit higher, but let's say that you don't really feel as strongly as photo and video as I do. So now let's change this to um, a little bit lower. So let's go 12%. And so if you scroll down here, you're going to see that we're now at 97%. So we have an extra 3% to um, put back into this funding, which you can spend or you cannot spend ultimately, but we can put that in another place. Let's say that you care a little bit more about music and entertainment, and maybe um, looking at this, your budget was $35,000, you see this percentages, and then you see that $1,000 is not gonna get you that 10-piece band that you really want. So we're gonna set this up to 6% because we've just stolen a little bit more. Maybe that's still not gonna get you that 10-piece band that you're looking for, but it just helps to add a little bit um, here that we've now taken away from the photo and video. So that's kind of what I mean by prioritizing and allocating from one place to another within your budget. So let's say that you, for example, have um, a friend who's officiating your wedding, so you actually don't have to pay for an officiant. What you could actually do is you could go ahead and delete this row. So you could delete that row altogether and then you could take that 2% that just went away and then you could add that in. Maybe you want like the most decadent dessert display ever and we could add that in here. I'm gonna go ahead and undo those changes, but I just wanted to show you guys that you do have that option of deleting an entire row and then putting that percentage elsewhere. So I'm gonna add that back in. Also, let's say that you just want to replace efficient with something else. So I'm just gonna name this miscellaneous vendor, and then that's set at 2% and you're just replacing efficient with something else. You could do that too. That's totally fine. Also on Google Sheets, you are able to rearrange, so you could rearrange these as you see fit. So maybe you want to drag and make all of your top priority and put them all at the very top and then put your lower priorities at the bottom. So you could do that as well. You can also edit your little notes over here. So you could put in notes um, over here. You could do that as well. Um, I have written notes up here, so one thing you do not want to edit is you don't want to edit column C and you don't want to edit column E because those have formulas to them. So you can see when I clicked in there, they have formulas set to them. So column C is 12% of our overall budget. So that dollar amount is representative of the 12% of your overall budget. So you don't actually want to edit the numbers in column C or in column. Let's go ahead and uh, make some changes here. So let's say you adjust your budget, you have a higher budget than this. 
And then we come on down to something like groom's attire. And more than likely, your groom's attire is not going to cost $750 because now we've got a much higher budget that we're working with. And so because of that, it's actually changed our groom's attire to be a good bit higher than what it was at $35,000. So because your overall budget is now higher, every dollar amount in these categories have become higher. So some of these categories are not going to be quite as high as this new budget is because of these percentages. So now you could actually lower these percentages and then you could adjust them elsewhere because these dollar amounts have now gotten higher than what the actual cost is probably going to be based on your budget. So you can adjust to things like that. So that's something that you can do if you have a little bit higher budget or maybe let's say you've got a lower budget and you know that certain things are actually definitely gonna cost more than other things. So maybe your beauty you know is probably going to cost more than $300, especially if you're going to want to do a trial. So maybe now you know that you're going to have to have more for your beauty, so maybe it's even 2.5% and now you're going to have to take away from another category. Maybe you think that you're going to have less rentals because your venue comes with um, more rentals. So let's lower the rentals. Really make it your own, customize it, just have fun with it and play around with what you see fit to make up the wedding that you feel like is going to match your priorities. And then you can also do things like say your venue comes with your food and beverage, then you can just combine it. So you just add up the percentages here and then you would delete one of the columns and then you would call it venue and then catering, beverage. So you could just do something like that and add the percentages together and then just delete this column. So that's all you really need to do and it just becomes really simple. So I hope that this is helpful for you guys. Um, again, wedding budget is really flexible thing um, or it really can be and I hope that um, it's not too hard for you guys to figure out. If you have questions, definitely ask me down in the comments below. And again, be mindful of the notes section here. I've left like little tidbits for you guys to see of what comes in certain things like for the bride's attire here. Don't forget about alterations. That can definitely be a pretty pricey thing, a couple hundred dollars for sure. And then your accessories like your veil and your shoes. And then I always recommend, this is one that I would recommend not taking out, this is the last thing I'll say about this, is an emergency miscellaneous fund, whether that be for a rain plan or just some sort of backup anything that you might need, just have some emergency funding. You might not use it, but it's just good to have a little bit of cushion in your wedding budget just in case something happens. But anyways, I will make this available for you guys on Google Drive. You'll be able to make a copy for yourself so that you can edit it and then have access and share it with whoever you need to share it with. Hope you guys enjoyed this part. All right, well, I hope this demo was really helpful for you guys. You can use this for your own wedding budget plug your number in and then shift things around as things change and come up for your own wedding based on the vendors that you are booking. So anyways, if you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to subscribe if you have not already. I put up videos every Tuesday. Leave a like, comment down below if this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you next week. Bye.